Whenever I speak about corruption or mention my work with Transparency International, one key reference point is our Corruption Perceptions Index. Since 1995, when we began compiling this index, it has helped to break the taboo on speaking about corruption, a problem of massive scale that damages the lives of billions of people around the world. Today, I am pleased to present you with the 2009 edition of the Corruption Perceptions Index, a ranking of 180 countries on their perceived levels of public sector corruption as determined by expert assessments and opinion surveys. This index scores these countries on a scale from zero, perceived to be highly corrupt, to 10, or places deemed to have low levels of corruption. This year's index demonstrates that no region of the world is immune to the perils of corruption. Although some regions score much better on average than others, the fact remains that the vast majority of the 180 countries included in the index score below five. This is very troublesome, particularly in times of a tentative economic recovery with massive stimulus packages and fast-track disbursements of public funds. We must commit ourselves to tackling corruption, or all efforts at long-term economic sustainability will fail. We must identify where corruption blocks the operations of good governance in order to tackle it and break its corrosive cycle. Corruptors are highly resilient and require vigilance by highly competent independent and properly resourced investigative and oversight institutions. Honest and reliable investors and thus economic growth are kept away from the poorer countries that need it most. Many of these countries are low scorers in the index. The 2009 index shows that we have reason to be concerned because in spite of gains made, Corruption continues to lurk in places where opacity rules, be it in rich or in poor countries. Fragile or unstable states that are scarred by war and conflict linger at the bottom of the index. These are Somalia with a score of 1.1, Afghanistan at 1.3, Myanmar with 1.4, and Sudan tied with Iraq at 1.5. Clearly, countries torn apart by conflict pay a huge toll in their capacity to govern. Our work in the last 16 years has shown us that stemming corruption requires strong oversight by parliaments, a well-performing judiciary, independent and properly resourced audit and anti-corruption agencies, vigorous law enforcement, transparency in public budgets, revenue and aid flows, as well as space for independent and responsible media and a vibrant civil society. When these institutions are weak or non-existent, corruption spirals out of control and mercenary individuals help themselves to public resources, feeding insecurity, impunity and a seeping loss of trust in the very institutions and nascent governments charged with ensuring, at a minimum, survival and stability. In spite of this, countries at the bottom of the index cannot be shut out from development efforts. Instead, what the index, index points to is the need to strengthen their institutions and for the investors and donors active there to be as vigilant of their processes and accountable for their own actions as they are in demanding this from the beneficiary governments. In other words, we must activate the concept of mutual accountability to achieve gains in the fight against corruption. Which brings us to the five top scoring countries in the 2009 index. These are New Zealand with 9.4, Denmark at 9.3, Singapore and Sweden tied at 9.2, and Switzerland with 9. These scores reflect political stability and well-functioning public institutions. We must remember that bribe money 
often stems from businesses based in the world's richest countries. Bribery, cartels, and other unfair business practices not only undermine competition, but contribute to massive loss of resources for development for all countries, but especially the poorer ones. Fiscal havens and global financial centers play a pivotal role in allowing corrupt officials to move, hide, and invest their illicitly gained wealth. Therefore, we believe that agreement of countries on regulatory frameworks, mutual cooperation, and proper domestic enforcement in the area of anti-corruption require urgent action, all of which are included in the UN Convention Against Corruption and are the right remedy and basis for action now. With the vast majority of countries and index scoring below five, the challenge is undeniable. Globally, strong commitments have been made by the G20 to ensure that integrity and transparency form a cornerstone of a newfound regulatory structure, and we welcome this. But we must insist that institutions of oversight be independent and properly resourced, and that we have legal frameworks that are actually enforced, coupled with smarter and more effective regulation. This will ensure lower levels of corruption and contribute to alleviating the enormous human suffering in the countries that perform most poorly in the index. Ultimately, a key driving force for such actions will be citizen demand. We know that nationally, elections are frequently won and lost over anti-corruption promises. So I urge you to look at what your leaders are doing. Their commitment is essential in tackling corruption. They and the public institutions which are there to serve you must operate with transparency and integrity rather than in ungoverned black holes riddled with conflicts of interest. These 180 countries in our index are our countries and their perceived levels of corruption will remain as such until we demand accountability. I fervently hope that we can work together to resist corruption and alleviate the suffering, waste, and injustice that it causes.